We all know Bitcoin is valuable, but why? Just because the number goes up on a screen? No. Bitcoin has characteristics that make it immutable, decentralized, transparent, optional, trustless, permissionless, and equitable. And we're going to touch on each of these in this video. And at the end, I'm going to give you three metrics to help you follow the price and be confident in the exchangeable value of the asset amidst influencers and grifters yelling in your ear to make rushed and frantic economic decisions. Break through the noise, the fud all around. Stay real with the signal, got 10 toes down. Bitcoin beats, the revolution sound. We dive in the depths where the real is found. The signal stays strong, no lies in sight. We stand it tall, we ready for the fight. Echoes in the dark, we see the plebs unite. Shoot that knowledge and we bring the light. Walton every week, dope rhymes he spit. Feel grind every day with the daily bit. Our features of the week. Sir Ulrich, are you down with the underground? I already gave you a problem in Bitcoin 101. In summary, the money is dying. It was a brief explanation of money and touched on the problem with it being controlled by a small contingency. Check the link above if you missed it. For now, let's talk about the solution. Remember Berkshire Hathaway's Charlie Munger? His Bitcoin claim to fame was calling it rat poison. What a classic case of projection. If anyone is going to raise an alarm against rat poison, it would most likely be a rat. This rat poison he refers to is a voluntary system where there is no one person more powerful than the rules set in place. That sounds kind of nice. You know, every construct in this fiat dominated world, there are asymmetric privileges and disadvantages. The parasites and the hosts, the producers and the taxers, our world has never had a fair economy to benefit the producers, protect the weak, empower the small actor. Until now. Bitcoin is made up of nodes that preserve the Bitcoin ledger. Every full node has a copy of every transaction establishing the current day allocations of all Bitcoin to all addresses. Its history is virtually immutable. The nodes validate transactions and determine what is the monetary policy. This is antithetical to the way society works where a privileged few dictate the policy everyone follows. Imagine you with a small, inexpensive computer have input to how your money works. Bitcoin flips the slave world on its head and world leaders just can't stand it. Now we hear the term decentralization thrown around the cryptoverse, but it simply doesn't hold up against the infrastructure of Bitcoin. Decentralization refers to the distribution of power, decision making, and control away from a central authority or entity, spreading it across the broader network. Now, every crypto project that uses that term to get you to buy its token, it doesn't take long to identify the private company that owns it, the foundation that governs it, or the small group of insiders that were gifted assets early, also called a pre-mine. But Bitcoin, it's just completely the opposite. No single person, group, or organization has unilateral control over the network. This creates a structure where participants can operate independently while contributing to the overall functioning of the system. With a system like Bitcoin that competes with violence-based competitors like government currencies, the only way to succeed is to not have a single person or group that can be bribed with gifts or blackmailed with coercion. The lobbyists and hitman have no one to target. Bitcoin is literally the first thing to ever live in a true free market. And if you don't have easy access to Bitcoin, it's a clear sign you live in an open air prison. You've got to get the hell out. It's only going to get worse. Is Bitcoin private? Yes and no. It's pseudonymous in that your side of the transaction is only represented by a 33 byte dynamic public key. However, blockchain analysis tools are able to parse the timeline of every Bitcoin. Except for Virgin Wallets not ever directly communicating with a KYC platform, all Bitcoin is able to be traced to its owner with enough effort. But this knife 
cuts both ways. This is a feature, not a bug. Every big institution or a government that wants to play in the network is bound by the same rules you and I are. Bitcoin is a free audit on the finances of nation states and corporate actors that have thrived off of manipulation in the shadows. For while individuals can more easily blend into the crowd, all eyes are on how many Bitcoin MicroStrategy holds, or even funnier, how much Bitcoin Germany sold. This country will be laughed at for a hundred years until they outlaw laughing. With Europe attacking first principle speech rights head on, that actually may be sooner than you think. Now, all you sports ball fans out there know the player option gives the athlete a great deal of power in their contract with their team. They get to play a few years on their contract, grow their personal valuation, and the year before the contract is full term, the player can survey the economic and performance landscape to determine if he should renegotiate early, offer his services on the open market, or play out his final year. Bitcoin is like a continuous player option scenario for users, node runners, coders, and miners. No one is compelled to participate like it's backed by guns rivals. This opt-in culture has only increased its resilience amidst uncertainty. The mining growth is a clear sign of this. Is every miner passionate about libertarian ideals or anti-central banking? No, but that doesn't mean miners don't find personal incentives to process transactions, cryptographically defend the network, and in return get to compete for the transaction fee and the newly mined block subsidy. These incentives create the impenetrable wall of hashing that makes it cost prohibitive to ever attack the network. The 51% attack will simply not happen. Bank of America will lose your money before that ever happens. Oh wait. Now just how valuable is it to be trustless? Meaning peer to peer, no third party to accomplish a task between two willing entities? Well, from a monetary standpoint, Visa and MasterCard dominate transactions across the West and they charge about 2.5%. The Bitcoin settlement layer, that's layer one, destroys that rate. And the Lightning Network's speedy layer two is even less expensive. Imagine every business saving 2% or more on every dollar, every unit of currency they make. Now, you know, it's said businesses will leave the adoption of Bitcoin due to the bottom line incentive, keeping the money that you make on goods and services. And I think there's something to that notion. Money has finally evolved to where you just don't need an arbiter. It was needed at one point in the past, but now that institution has simply been made obsolete. But you may not believe me, so here's an example. Take a look at Western Union stock. The money transfers company and no not the year over year zoom out check out the five year stock price it's not a coincidence it has died amidst the accelerating adoption of bitcoin and bank of international settlements bitcoin is coming for you visa mastercard we already know you're getting involved in crypto to stay relevant your days are numbered too trust is for what one cannot do by oneself so go ahead and sit this one out we got this could you imagine your bank account frozen for not wanting a medical injection could you imagine losing access to the internet because of the type of information you want to consume could you imagine the ability to exchange goods and services being controlled by one entity that is not perfect and has their own subjective interests for power Bitcoin being an open source protocol over TCP IP empowers all who wish to partake in the vast and growing network. This is a benefit to people who are oppressed by their leaders or political rivals. For Americans, it's just hard to grasp a world where censorship is the norm rather than a fight on the edges of society. Those same privileged Americans would say to the human beings in war-torn Africa, the civil unrest in Southeast Asia, and the extreme speech limits in Europe to essentially do what you're told. Bitcoin enables the oppressed in the shadow of the oppressor. What's the value of a light that the bad guys can't turn off? <laughs> I pray you never have to answer that question.
Bitcoin's coin creation process, also known as mining, operates through a decentralized algorithmic mechanism called proof of work, which ensures that new Bitcoin is issued in a fair and transparent manner. Roughly every 10 minutes, new Bitcoin, the block subsidy, and transaction fees are awarded to ASIC miners who successfully solve a complex mathematical puzzle. Every 210,000 blocks discovered, this subsidy is cut in half in an event we call the halving. This takes place roughly every four years. The transparent and preset nature of this system ensures everyone can know how much Bitcoin exists and will exist in the future and thus acts accordingly to that knowledge. Our current system works in secret chambers and behind closed doors. No one knows exactly how many dollars or euros are in circulation. And the people who decide to add or subtract to that amount have an economically unfair advantage. We need look no further than Nancy Pelosi's investment history to know what you can do with such knowledge. All right, in all my time creating long form videos, whether with the Pleb Underground or Corey Clipson's company, I never talked about price projections. As a topic, it's short sighted, emotional and shallow. Yet it's why a vast majority of us came to Bitcoin in the first place. Now, I bet some of you have been scared off of Bitcoin by some dumb, I'm sorry, disinformed financial advisor telling you that Bitcoin is too volatile. So two simple retorts. Number one would be what's wrong with volatility on the way up? Because that's the only direction Bitcoin is going in terms of purchasing power up and to the right. And number two, why don't you lower your time preference? <laughs> now, at that point, your advisor may refuse to work with you. But why disregard an asset that has absolutely worked like a Swiss clock on any four year time horizon? What is savings, if not money for the long term? I introduce you to the Bitcoin 200 week moving average. It's a powerful metric that flies in the face of skittish and error filled investment strategies. It has never sloped downward. Professional wealth managers are literally worthless in comparison to Bitcoin's growth over this time frame. So what does this tell you? Well, if you ignore the traders, the influencers, the Financial Times and their coping zealots, and just reallocate a fixed amount of savings into Bitcoin periodically without failure, you win. I repeat, don't go on YouTube or Twitter for celebrity affinity scams or rumors. MicroStrategy has been buying billions of dollars of Bitcoin and didn't even send us to 100K. Through distributed purchases, self-custody, and program scarcity, a bigger fiat carrot will have to be dangled for people to part with their Bitcoin. In short, if everyone just DCA and self-custody, NGU. Now here are three price models that have proven themselves and are conservative enough to hold firm. First, simple three up, one down from a calendar year. Bitcoin is almost 16 years old. This has not failed yet. 2021 up, 2022 down, 2023 up, 2024 up, 2025 probably up and 2026 likely down. I don't make the rules. Now, number two is the cycle theory. And this is where the having occurs and then nothing happens. Well, for about six to nine months. And then there's a clear, strong upward action that occurs for a couple of months, pushing Bitcoin to heights that have just never been seen before. But of course, people think it lasts forever and people get wrecked and then it retracts, but it retracts to higher lows than the last time Bitcoin was claimed to be dead. Now, to add some more sauce to this one, the Federal Reserve will be in a 12 to 15 month time frame of quantitative easing that would entice more TradFi investors to speculate during this season. Smart liquidity will go into Bitcoin, even if just for a season. Finally, Andy Estrom's simple model from 2019 when Bitcoin was only 8.5K and he projected to grow to 400K in 10 years time. He put this in his book, Why Buy Bitcoin? Bitcoin right now is 7X higher than it was five years prior, 
we're at 60K at the time of this recording. Now, another five years experiencing another 7X growth would put Bitcoin just above the prediction at 420K. Now, right now, I'm calling it the 5-7 model. Maybe it will stick. Maybe it will just continue on for another five years. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, if you stick to these tenets when it comes to price expectations, you likely won't become disappointed, fall into debt, or lose the trust of your family because of gambling on a long shot. Bitcoin is here to make you economically sovereign. It's not a lottery ticket. Now, imagine a monetary policy that you participate in. And so, you know, money, money isn't supposed to be complicated. It's a tool to defer wants and needs for a later time. If you defer your choice, don't you think you should roughly have the same choice in the future? As Bitcoin discovers its share of the world economy, it provides a unique opportunity for simple non-finance professionals to close their eyes, reallocate their earnings into this network and forget about it. You don't need to Fed watch. You don't need to review quarterly reports. Bitcoin is de-financializing the ability to preserve and increase your purchasing power as it matures. I am Sir Ulrich, like my father before me. Bitcoin makes money simple again. Bye.